All right, you are still watching Ways. Now, today is World Tuberculosis Day. It's observed on the 24th of March every year around the world. This annual event tries to educate people about the impact of tuberculosis and how to eliminate this devastating disease. Now, according to the World Health Organization, the theme for the World Tuberculosis Day 2023 is Yes, We Can End TB, uh, which aims to inspire hope and encourage high-level leadership, increased investment, faster uptake of new um, WHO recommendations, adoption of innovations, accelerated action, and multi-sectoral collaboration to combat the tuberculosis epidemic. Huh. So, I mean, this, we've come a long way when it comes to tuberculosis. I remember when I was younger, it was almost like a person cough near you. Yeah. <laughs> so my auntie used to, she used to joke, like if you have those kind of co choking cough that you keep on coughing continuously. Yeah. So there was a day my sister was choking and she was just coughing, coughing, coughing. My auntie just went, I've been at TB. <laughs> if you see the way everybody bursts into laughter, you know, but I mean, I thank God for vaccines. I thank God for so many things that have happened over the years, you know. Um, I, I don't know how how to cope. I've, I've, um, some people around me have died, you know, as a result of tuberculosis, you know, many years ago. I heard stories of how they were coughing blood and all of that. So I don't know. Uh, can it truly be er eradicated? Uti, you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, it's still a very real risk, particularly um, in Nigeria. Sadly, it is, uh, it still remains a public health threat for us in Nigeria. I think we're ranked number three in the world. I think we're, we're only behind, uh, I think it's India and China in terms of number of cases that we have yet. And that's because so they have more population. Year. Pardon? I said that's because they have more population. Well, also, uh, apart from the population, of course, we, yes, we do have the population, but the fact is, it's not about the population, it's about the presence of the disease itself. So we still have, you know, almost 250,000 Nigerians dying from tuberculosis every year um, and about over half a million cases that still occur. Uh, so really and truly, it's still um, quite a critical problem in Nigeria. We're one of the top uh, countries where high burden for TB. So I know we say it now and it's not as, like, like you rightly said, you know, in the past, it used to be at the top of everybody's mind when people were coughing. Um, but the, the fact is Nigeria still remains uh, quite quite a heavy, there's still a heavy presence of TB here. So, and you know, it's one of those things that um, there is a vaccination for it. So it should, at the end of the day, not be something that is occurring. You know, it, it's in some countries, they don't even give the BCG vaccine anymore. But um, we're still seeing these issues here. So there's obviously a lot of work to be done. So it's great to have days like this that shine, of course, spotlight, spotlights on, on um, diseases like this that really are still affecting Nigerians. Absolutely. And you know what is even more scary, Uti? You know how we have loads of clusters in Nigeria. So you are in a downfall bus. It is loaded. Yeah. You are, you know... We are so used to, nobody understands that personal yeah. space. We are used to, you know, choking. If it's boss, mm -hmm. we are inside public transport, you know. So, so just imagine if one person, you know, has that, you know, it's, 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 it will spread quickly. It's, as, it's the same thing as, what's that thing called? The one with the sweat. Um, uh, what's it called now? I, I forget the name. Hi, um, yeah. Hepatitis B, right? Oh, hep yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's the more reason we should actually be very deliberate about, you know, vaccines, deliberate about, you know, everything preventive. Because if, if, if anything happens, it will spread really quickly, you know, because of the, the nature, just the, just the very nature. How many people can afford private cars and all of that? You know, we still have mass, uh, what's it called, clusters when it comes to human um, tra um, trans, 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 transports or transition or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is definitely. And I mean, it's not the easiest of diseases to treat. I think the entire course of treatment takes about six months. So, again, not cheap. Not cheap. Yeah. So mm. the government has to then subsidize. Because even with the education, you want to educate people and tell them, oh, um, 
once you see your symptoms, come for treatment and all of that, a lot of people wouldn't come because they know how expensive it's going to be. So they'd rather just try to maintain it. Try to yeah. Okay. I hope um, our government is listening because these are a few things that you can actually, these are like quick wins for any government. Mm -hmm. Just take care of healthcare, take care of power, and leave us, we'll be fine. <laughs> All right, so mm -hmm. what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so my story, um, actually, I was trying to find something related to our, our Women's Month and our topic. So um, the headline says, Trans transgender athletes banned from women's events. So this is from the World Athletics um, Federation, basically. Uh, the president, Sebastian Co has come out to say that from March 31st, transgender women will no longer be allowed to compete in female track and field events, regardless of their levels of testosterone. So, of course, we know that, um, uh, th so when we talk about transgender women here now, we're talking about men who have gone through the, the transgender process and, and now women and these women, depending on their level of um, testosterone, were able to compete in these events. But, of course, it was believed that they would have um, an unfair advantage. Because you imagine comparing the strength of a man to that of a woman, even though they've gone through, you know, the hormone therapy and the surgery and all of that. So this is, uh, like we said, this is about equity. It's about making sure that, you know, nobody, everybody has what they need to level the playing field. And it was clear that even though um, it was the, all the, would I say, research that had been done was inconclusive in showing that going through that transgender process um, did not, would I say positively or negatively, did not equal, like, like level the playing field to say that this person that used to be a man is no longer as strong as a man and therefore can compete with women. So I think that this, for me, is a step in the right direction. We should be Very comparing right apples. Direction, no. and apples. <laughs> exactly. I was um, waiting for you to yeah. land. <laughs> yep. Because yep. even, Uti, your son that is how old? Six um, years or seven years old? Mm. My sons that are teenagers, mm. the kind of thing they can do now, even at my yeah. age, I can't even do it. I can't lift it. I mean, these things are... The, there's a design for every human being. So you cannot compare the strength of a man and a woman. So regardless of... So I was just waiting for you to learn. This is a very good direction. I don't think mm. they should... So if you want to compete, you go and compete with your male counterpart. Don't compete as a woman when you were a man and now transition. I don't think it's it's um, it's fair. If we were if we are being honest, ah. and I actually saw the news. I was very happy because this is an argument that has been going on for a very long time now, where a lot of women have been complaining that you can't have a man come and compete with us, even if you've you've changed your sex or something like that. It doesn't matter. You're still I don't know. They don't want to be regarded as men anymore because they've changed. Not a problem, but. If you feel like you need to compete, then maybe create your own transgender yes. sports or yeah. something. I don't know. Yeah. Compete with the regular so, so get, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah I think to give comparison. Yeah. But I think create that they started a good thing. Yeah. Um, there's other federations. I think the Swimming Federation who had previously allowed it. So uh, this is really just for me. It's a step in the right, the right direction, direction when we're talking about equity. Because I don't believe, I don't actually think that there are any transgender athletes but i think there's some female athletes that they've they sort of complained i think there's that is she south african or brazilian the lady who they sort of said her testosterone levels were really really high mm. um so it, this is really more about the principle of it and shining the spotlight on it from that perspective of equity and you know still asking that there needs to be a lot more research and a lot more work done so Absolutely. definitely we we kick the can down the road and we see where it goes tomorrow but for today Women compete against women. Please do. Thank you. <laughs> Just keep it that way. <laughs> Just leave it there. Okay, Jennifer. All right, so for me, appeal court affirms Adele K as Oshun governor. I mean, this case has been um, ongoing for a little while now, but the court has actually sat down and then decided that, okay, that they're giving it to Adele K, and then they decided to award a fine of 500,000. This is a slap. To... <laughs> I um, Oye Tola, Tola. Mm. 500,000. What happened? It should have been 50 million. 
have you not have you not seen how ridiculous uh, our the court the amount like for instance you want to file a case twelve thousand naira but hey these things are not for re they are not really for the people that are affluential. Imagine a poor man going to court. That five hundred thousand is a lot of money. Trust me. Well, they, they will not be able to pay it. But I, I think um, you know you know this court case now because now there are so many court cases are pending. You know. I'm just praying that whatever it is, the process will be followed through yeah. and it will be transparent and everybody will clearly see that, okay, yes, there was fairness and justice mm. across all court cases that mm -hmm. are holding up. So congratulations to Adeleke. Um, my story is actually very interesting. Um, the federal government has arraigned um, Professor Dibu Ojerinde, the former registrar for JAM, um, seven counts charge, bordering around money laundry. Funny thing is now it's plus him and his four children. Mm -mm. They mentioned their children's name and his company. So um, to the tune of five billion naira. And they're saying that these uh, funds were diverted, you know, while he served as um, National Examination Council and JAMB Registrar. Um, that's quite interesting. Interesting. So, I mean, you see that some of these um, parastata or ministries where you think there's no money. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money happening and there's a lot of corruption. So when you hear issues around, oh, education, something is not right and all of that, you know, when you trace some of these things, it can be directly linked to, you know, fraud that is ongoing or, you know, embezzlement or whatever it is. Well, hopefully he goes to court and, you know, would see the end of this conversation. But that's the story right I there. I mean, this is interesting because this is the body that sets the course for every young adult in Nigeria. I mean, after secondary school, you need to write your jam to be able to get into university. And we know how a lot of people slave away to actually pass those exams. I mean, we know that bribes still happen. There are people who still, they had to remove the paper base because a lot of people were cheating. Mm -hmm. So you did all of that, and even you, the head, go go. <laughs> so we'll follow well, through and see, let's see where let's how, see how it will it end. Yeah. You know, you know, say Nigeria caught Matai. Mm. <laughs> all right, so let's take a break now. We want to discuss equity and what it means for the career woman. Stay with us. We'll be right back.